Now, with these studies, and I, 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 for the sake of brevity, uh, I talk more in the discussion section. Um, the question there is, well, so what? You've got these associations, but have you proven yet that giving testosterone does something constructive other than make men feel better? Well, here's uh, just a few studies, or just one main study here before, before I close with my time. This is a small study, 24 men by Kapoor, published three years ago. And these were men who had diabetes and they had low testosterone. And in a randomized fashion, meaning some get testosterone, some don't, and then they switch back and forth the groups. They gave them testosterone and showed, over here on the right side, that our measure of um, uh, blood sugar control, the hemoglobin A1C test, improved significantly just by that intervention of giving testosterone. That's quite compelling. Normally we give insulin and, and blood sugar lowering pills, but just giving testosterone benefited these men, and it did so by dropping their resistance to insulin. It allowed their own body's natural insulin to work better. And you can see here that, as you might have surmised, is that the visceral fat or the visceral obesity in these men was improving by giving them testosterone. In some way, the fat here was being metabolized and moved elsewhere in the body or, or disposed of. So a reduction in weight circumference was noted. You want to keep your waist below 40 inches. And it, 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 the lower the better, actually. Keep, keep that central body fat um, down. And in addition, drop their cholesterol from 5.1 down to 4.83. All significant changes. So important. <clears throat> Not really a new phenomenon. We've known for many, many, many years that testosterone has effect on muscle and, and body fat. This other study you can see on the screen now goes back to uh, 1992, done by uh, uh, a group in, uh, in Europe. And I like this study because um, it shows here that using oral testosterone in this situation in, in, with Andriol, but this has been shown with multiple different forms, that you can drop total adipose tissue, total body fat. And they also looked not just on total body fat, they looked in the visceral body fat, and again show that there was a uh, reduction in, uh, in that nasty fat by taking testosterone. So in conclusion for this part, I've shown you evidence that hypogonadism or low testosterone is associated with type 2 diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. The presence of metabolic syndrome is associated with an increased risk of vascular disease. In studies, uh, all of this association, low testosterone levels uh, predicted the development of metabolic syndrome or diabetes. And uh, I didn't show you, I deleted the graphics for this, but uh, if you look at a cross section of patients in diabetes clinic, it's not uncommon that they're low in testosterone. Up to a third of men with type 2 diabetes are low in testosterone. And I showed you this study that testosterone therapy can, uh, can have effects on, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, blood sugars and body composition. So now testosterone isn't for everybody. Um, you have to have symptoms of deficiency, a good reason to take it, and, and be given in an appropriate fashion and monitored. Uh, men should be assessed. They should have their blood levels measured, um, uh, check their hemoglobin levels, uh, digital rectal examination, a DRE, uh, prostate-specific uh, antigen testing, and then when testosterone is initiated, they should be seen it at three or six months afterwards and followed along. And in those individuals who have osteoporosis or at risk following their bone density as well is, is inappropriate. Testosterone shouldn't be used in men who have uh, confirmed cancer of the prostate or cancer of the breast, the latter being very unusual in men. If they have very concentrated blood or uh, he the hematocrit over 50%, it's normal that men have a higher hematocrit than, than, than women. It's part of being male. But certain forms, particularly the injectable form of testosterone, has a bit of a side effect of putting it too high. We monitor for that. Sleep apnea should be excluded. Sleep apnea can make uh, testosterone deficiency occur. Heart failure, if it's severe, we're uh, careful to use testosterone in that, in that situation. Or if there's a problem with the prostate, like a high PSA level or a problem with, with uh, drainage past the prostate, those issues need addressed uh, first before testosterone therapy started. Now the next graphic is one I, I always like to put in because it's a, it's a thing in our society, everybody wants a quick fix. They want the diet pill so they can go to McDonald's and Wendy's. They want not to exercise, and life's not that, that simple. 
It's, it's part of a comprehensive treatment package in terms of keeping healthy. If you're low in testosterone and interventions of lifestyle changes uh, cannot uh, bring the levels up, if there's some drug that's putting it down or some disease that needs to be treated, can't be remedied and it's still low, then uh, it's appropriate to take testosterone in the absence of a contraindication. This graphic shows the difference between younger and older men going through a strength training program. And I think you can uh, believe that those curves are pretty well similar. So the point of this graphic is it doesn't matter how old you are. If you put in the work at the gym, exercise, good lifestyle, you can still have very positive effects on your body. And uh, again, testosterone is indicated only for those who, uh, who are low. So I'm um, supposed to close, but testosterone supplementation has the, the potential to counteract the signs, symptoms, and health risk of uh, late onset testosterone deficiency or hypogonadism, and entails the chance, at least, to maintain and improve the health status of elderly men, but it should be used in appropriate patients. I had to close with a healthy male, an aging male, for those Star Trek fans. This is uh, Patrick Stewart. And uh, I know nothing of his health other than the fact he's just about to turn 70. So I, I, th I thought that uh, he deserved to uh, be my closing slide. Thank you.